Hello, Teak Nation. Donnie Elders, Chief Executive Officer here. We are at the end of week five of quarantine for me. Hopefully, uh, it's the end of week five for you. For, for others, I know it might be week six or seven or possibly eight. But I want to thank you for continuing to engage with us. Thank you for continuing to consume these videos and stay updated on the things that are going on in the fraternity. Many of these videos have been essentially highlights of the things that have been occurring throughout the week. And, and there are many things that were shared with me this week and a lot of good things to highlight. Just a couple of pieces I'm going to touch on that I actually want to talk about the future and talk about some of the trends and the things that we're seeing. So number one, this past week was National Volunteer Week and cannot say enough great things, cannot thank our volunteers enough, the tremendous people that engage at every single level. Some folks engage at the local level, some folks engage at the regional level, and some folks engage at the international level. We wanna thank every single volunteer for their selfless service, for their dedication to our organization, for living the values of love, charity, and esteem, for continuing to promote the growth to advance the mission of our organization to aid men in their mental, moral, and social development for life. Thank you. This week, there were there were town halls that were held at the end of the evenings. I know we, we call them happy hours, a chance for guys to get together and heard stories of up to three hours that, that our volunteers were having conversations. Some of those volunteers were uh, folks who have been experienced and been engaged with the fraternity for decades. Some of them were just starting to get re-engaged. Some of them weren't even volunteers yet, just alumni who came in and, and wanted to, to learn more about the fraternity and learn how it has evolved and adapted into this current time. And I want to thank Chris Niles, who led that effort, uh, our Director of Alumni Engagement, hosted hosted those events every evening, I know as well. Uh, we had a number of, of special guests who were interviewed uh, each day, highlighting different areas of the organization, some of the you know chapter advisor, uh, province advisor, alumni associations, the many capacities that our alumni can support and engage the fraternity. Those folks were part of, of interviews and, and highlighting, showcasing why they're involved and how others should get involved. So I want to thank Brendan Rick and Tom Becker, number of guys that we brought into the mix there. And thank you for your time, your engagement, and for being an example of fraternity for life. As we look toward the future, and I, I'm incredibly hopeful about the future. I'm incredibly hopeful about what's happening right now. So excited about again these these folks we're seeing alumni who haven't been engaged before who are starting to get engaged we're starting to see the creativity out of our collegiate members the innovation the thought process of what can we do through this time and that is the focus that i want to to implore you through this video that it is a time to embrace change and attack our future and innovate and and that can be done in a multitude of capacities it has to start uh, with how we're engaging our collegiate members and how we're engaging our alumni members. And th those two, uh, there are different ways that we attack those. We need to make sure if you're a collegiate member, you're watching this video, how are you continuing to engage with your members? Are you still having Zoom calls? Are you still checking in on those guys to make sure uh, that they're doing okay, both physically, mentally? Both of those areas are criti critical as well as spiritually. Are they, are they in a good place? And ensuring that this recruitment effort, many times we focus on recruitment, it's just about recruiting the new members, recruiting the folks who are going to be coming to campus. We're in a different reality. We got we to gotta spend the time recruiting the people who are currently in our chapter and make sure they're in a good place to come back to college. Yes, uh, some of them that could, that could have financial aspects to it, but there are many other folks, is, is, do I want to go back to college and ensuring they have that community there. That, that's waiting for them to help to continue to grow them and evolve them and put them in a position to be the best version of themselves because that's what our organization stands for and it's what we do day in and day out to get the best out of people. On the alumni front, both ensuring that, and, and this is, starts with us, starts with me, to ensure that we're putting more, more tools, more processes, more educational events out there and, and training for our volunteers, but also that we're spending the time to go and engage alumni in ways that we haven't before. And for, for many, that might be just communicating with them, talking about the things that are going on currently, sharing the need for, for future engagement, future involvement, uh, giving them ways that they can be helpful and, and ways that they can benefit the group as well as the region, the province, the international fraternity. So appreciate everybody thinking in that way and pushing and driving in that form and fashion of how can we engage our collegiate members and our current members as well as how can we engage and focus upon those volunteers and those alumni who are not engaged as we start to to map out and look out towards the future and look towards this next academic year we've really got to do a great job when it comes to planning and budgeting on the budgeting front if i'm a collegiate member if i'm a volunteer if i'm on a boa 
we need to think about the fact that social events are, are probably not going to occur for the most part. The social distancing, I don't expect that that is going to shift. And you hear me on these videos call it physical distancing. I don't think that's shifting. I don't think that's going away. I, it's, it's hard for me to envision that we're going to be having large events. So let's start to budget and plan for that. If we're cutting back costs in that area that possibly had deeper investments in, where can we invest that money? Or do we cut back on the cost to the local chapter, your local chapter dues because of the financial constraints of this time and this period? Something we need to think about. Planning. Are we doing the things right now to prepare for our future when it comes to recruitment, when it comes to, not, and I talked about on the honor roll collegiate members, how about the future? There's a lot of groups out there that have summer recruitment. That can still happen virtually. If, if you're a group that possibly doesn't have the chapter property that you want, or maybe you don't have a chapter property at all, well, here's a tremendous opportunity that it is going to, there's not going to be chapter houses to go in and out of, and, and that can in some ways uh, impact why people might join a chapter. You have the same advantage that everyone else has, that it's through this virtual platform, it's through Zoom, it's through ways you connect, utilize the university and get some of those contact lists, send out an email to all of them and, and host a meeting and talk about the organization. Invite special guests, invite some members of our staff, go to teak.org slash staff, invite them. Let, let volunteers know in the local area, get some alumni to come and get on that call and talk about how the fraternity impacted them and, and how it's improved and set them up for future success, whether it's having a family or building a business or being engaged in their community. It's a real opportunity to utilize this time and be innovative and thoughtful about who we are. And the reason why people join a fraternity is, is because of people. People join people and relationships. And you can still do that through this platform. Is it dis different? Absolutely. But you can be genuine and authentic and drive our values and drive what you're building, what you have built, or even further, what you want to be. You can do that through this time, through this platform, and showing a little bit of your heart, a little bit of what's in your head, and a little bit of your passion, your drive for a brighter future. So I encourage you to consider that. That recruitment pipeline also comes with alumni and our volunteer core. And we're going to be doing it at the international level, but I encourage you to do it at the local level. Again, reach out to those folks. Let them know about the need. Let them know about how they can be helpful. Ensure, for many folks, they think about the fraternity is, if I'm volunteering, that means I'm giving 10 hours a week, 15 hours a week. There are folks who are volunteers that we might just need them once a year, twice a year to come in and engage in a certain way or help look over our budget because they have a financial background or come and give us a, a, a speech on leadership. Or uh, how about you, you virtually be part of an officer retreat that we're going to have, have this summer and you have someone who's maybe a CEO or in a high level organization of leadership that can come in and be part of that virtual conversation for an hour or two and help to motivate, but also inspire, lead, drive change continue to look over budgets, look over plans, and get guys in a position to be successful. Now, our volunteers, it can happen in all sorts of flavors and all sorts of time frames. And I encourage you to reach out and think about that. Again, if you need help, teak.org slash staff. Also, we can get you in connection with the folks who are local volunteers to your, to your area. Or if you want a contact list, can we get everybody within 50 miles of our chapter? Get, get us the contact information of some of those folks. We are happy to work with you on that. It's another resource in being part of an international fraternity. It's also what our headquarters team is here to do. So as we move forward, we move ahead. There's going to be many more messages, many more discussions on what the future looks like. And it's still forming as, as we're sitting here having this conversation. Universities are looking at a few, few different options in what the fall looks like. Some are already discussing they're going to start virtually. Some are saying we're expecting students in August. It's going to be an environment that we've never seen before. And we got to adapt and prepare for that. So if you're going to be virtual starting the, the semester, how can we get ahead and plan and prepare for that? And sure, we're still creating and forming a sense of community. And if you're gonna be on campus, how can we form that sense of community with the physical distance, but still making the impact that we know we can make? Yes, it makes a difference that we are two feet from each other and having a conversation with 30 people at a time together. That's one way, but there's also other platforms such as this that we can communicate, other things that we can do to drive engagement, to better people and get the most out of them. I know that we can do this. I have tremendous hope, I have tremendous belief, and I have tremendous conviction in what our future holds and what we can be. And I'm grateful if you're watching this, that you're a part of that, whether you're already initiated, whether you're someone who's just a fan or supporter of the organization, or you're someone who stumbled upon this and want to know what the heck is this Talk Hap Epsilon fraternity. It is something that has impacted all of us who are members and something that I know can make an even bigger impact in our campuses, in our communities. But we have to be committed to that and drive that. And focus upon that because there are a lot of folks that once they leave college, they think that's when fraternity ends and it's not. 
and, and those of us who are engaged as alumni, we understand that. And some of us have, have come, to that, come to that light at different times in our life, but we've all found the same thing, that when we, when we took the bond of the organization, we said we're going to be part of the fraternity for life. And many of those experiences are far richer after college. And I know for me, I had a tremendous collegiate experience, but I've had even richer experiences after college, relationships, connections, things that have, have shifted the, 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 the force of my life the, the charting of my life have been people who've come in and impacted me and helped me and humbled me and, and put me in positions to be stronger, to be a better father, a better leader, a better brother, a better son. And so I encourage you, if you're watching this video and you're a collegiate member, that you, you prepare yourself to be involved in that way. And if you're an alumni member who's not been involved, come back and get involved. Go to teak.org slash staff and, and track us down and, and let us know how you want to be engaged. Last piece. I know there have been people out there, how can we help? How can we help? And I understand for some of you, this is not a time for you to be able to contribute, not a time to be able to give. Those of you that can, teak.org slash LLT. Life Low Teak is a great program. 100% of the funds due to our great partners at the foundation, 100% of those dollars go to the fraternity, to our educational programs to help impact the organization, investing these resources back in our membership. I encourage you, teak.org slash LLT, go look at that. Is there a need? Absolutely, there's a need for the resources that we're going to need to build the fraternity to the heights that we want to take it. There's no doubt that, that there's constraints right now financially, but I will tell you this, there's, finance constraint, there's financial constraints for everyone. And, and the critical piece is what can we do together as a team, as a Teak family, to move the organization forward? And for some of you, that might be $20. For some of you, that might be $20,000. For the very elite of you, that might be $200,000. Whatever it is, it makes an impact. It matters. It allows us to advance the mission of the organization. So I look forward to continuing to engage with you. I hope that you're you're going to our YouTube page. Uh, I hope that you're going to our YouTube channel. Apologize. Go to our YouTube channel. Look at all the videos, the content that's being produced. It's educational. It's inspirational. It talks about the future and, and the current Teak Nation as well as going to teak.org slash coronavirus for updates on things that are occurring within the organization. We've got a bright future ahead. We got a lot of people doing a lot of great things right now. I'm proud of everyone who's stepping up in this time. We need even more of you in every single aspect, time, talent, and treasure. Thank you for being part of the organization. Thank you for being a teak. Frauders, I love the fraternity.